Hey there, Luma. It's Denise from LumaHead.com with a project that is awesome for any season. It is a braided reef and it's super easy, I promise. So go ahead and get your 24 peg loom, 41 yards of worsted weight yarn, a 10 inch foam circle, and I'll explain why later. Of course, your hook and needle, and if you want some stitch markers for a more complete list and more information, visit lumahat.com forward slash reef. And without further ado, let's begin with a drawstring cast on. We're gonna take a single strand of worsted weight yarn and secure it to the anchor peg. I'm gonna use a simple knot. You can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable. And then we're gonna take that strand and put it between pegs 24 and one. And I'm going to be going left to right. You can go right to left, direction has no effect. And you're gonna go behind peg one, in front of two, behind three, in front of four, behind five. And we're gonna continue this zigzag method to cast on our yarn and we're gonna keep going all the way till we get to peg 24. And what I want you to do is when you reach peg one, you're gonna take the yarn behind peg one, come in front of peg two, okay, it looks like this, and then you're gonna lay the yarn loosely over a few pegs, say six, seven, and then take the yarn behind and hold it there with your one hand. And with the other, take your pick and you're gonna knit off peg two, right? Because peg one only has one strand. And so every peg that has two loops, you're going to knit off. And after you've done a few of them, then take your yarn back to the front again and lay it over the next few pegs. Again, six, seven, whatever you're comfortable with. Take the yarn behind and you're gonna hold it there with your hand hold it in place, and then again, knit off every peg that has two loops. And you're gonna continue to do this all the way until you get back to that first, um, I'm sorry, back to peg 24. So every peg with two loops, you're going to take your hook and take that bottom loop over the top and knit off. And now you're at peg 24, once you knit off peg 24, you're done with your cast on, and now you're ready for rows one through five, where you will knit those five rows using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is that on row one only, peg one has no loop. You see that here? So you're going to skip peg one only on row one. So take the working yarn over to peg two and you're gonna half wrap that peg and then knit off. You're gonna do the same thing for peg three. Wrap, bang, there you go. Just keep doing that. You need to do five rows of this. Again, keeping in mind that you're only skipping peg one on row one and after that you just knit all 24 pegs and you need five rows so while you're knitting i'm going to take this time to say thank you to lorena reese for her continued support of this channel thank you so much my friend and to all of my patrons on patreon all right guys keep knitting remember that you need five rows so here i am on peg 24 i finished row one i'm going to row two and like all other rows i'm going to knit all 24 pegs don't forget to take the knot off the anchor peg and then you're ready for the next part we're going to be knitting rows 6 through 140 using the e-wrap version of the knit stitch and we're gonna knit flat which means back and forth instead of in the round but pay attention because we're only knitting eight pegs so we're gonna start here on peg one, knit till you get to peg eight right here, because it's only eight pegs that we're knitting flat, and then you're gonna turn around. So get the working yarn, and let me show you how to do an E-wrap. You're basically just wrapping your peg completely from the back to the front, wrap the peg, and like I said, we're gonna wrap eight of those. So seven, eight, and now hold on to your working yarn and with your hook you're going to knit off so take the bottom loop over the top and knit off knit all eight pegs this is row six 
And once you've done all of your loops, your bottom over the top, you're gonna now go to row seven and you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to wrap, but I want you to pay attention how I'm gonna turn around. So this is peg eight. I'm gonna go in front of eight, behind seven and wrap it. So it's almost like a figure eight. Let's do that one more time. I'm gonna take the working yarn in front of eight, behind peg seven and then completely wrap peg seven and that's gonna give me like a figure eight and that's gonna help me to turn around and now I'm gonna wrap six five four three two one that's how I'm gonna turn around so this is row seven I'm gonna knit off the bottom loop over the top to complete my e wraps because this is what it takes to do an e wrap version of the knit stitch that was row seven and now I'm gonna turn around and do row eight. So here again, I'm gonna turn around doing that figure eight and then wrap those eight pegs and then knit off. You're gonna to continue to do this until you have 140 rows in total for pegs one through eight. And I wanted you to see um, what to expect. It's gonna look sort of like this, like a pocket and still connected on the other sides because it's only those eight pegs that you're going to continue to knit. And so this pocket is gonna get longer and longer. Once you get those 140 rows done, then you're gonna take the working yarn and you're going to stretch until you've covered at least eight pegs. I would suggest as many as 12 and then cut the working yarn and you're going to then need to secure this because you don't want uh, your loops to come off so you're going to do a slip knot and try to get uh, as close as you can to that peg and then you're going to take that loop from the slip knot and put it on any of the pegs between one and eight I'm I'm going to place mine on peg six but you can uh, do any that you feel comfortable with so for now you're done with pegs 1 through 8 and you're ready to start on pegs 9 through 16 which are what we're going to call strap 2 and you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to knit pegs 9 through 16 for an additional 135 rows which is going to then give you in total 150. 40 and you're only going to knit those pegs but first you need to take uh, your working yarn again go ahead and make a slip knot because we need to put the uh, working yarn back on the loom so you make that slip knot give yourself a little bit of a tail to work with and then put that on peg 9 right here and then you're going to tighten your slip knot and now you're going to wrap the next seven pegs right because you need eight pegs in total so wrap your um, those pegs from 9 through 16 and then you're going to knit off again like I said it's exactly the same as you did uh, 1 through 8 right and now you're going to turn around because you need 140 rows in total now, while you guys knit, I wanna take this moment to say thank you to Carol Mabel from PromiseLearningATL.com, Elise Patron, Penny Pitchard, Kristen Stone, Barbara Ledger, and Mackenzie LeBaron for covering the cost of closed captioning. Thank you, sweet ladies. I wanted to give you a quick look at the project as I progress on my second uh, strap you see that they're connected and it does create that little pocket just like before but now you have this extra long strap that's just laying there they are attached those first five rows that you uh, did with the u-wrap keeps the uh, straps attached all three of them actually are going to be attached so just keep that in mind as you knit once you're done with your 140 rows for your second strap, then again, leave that long tail that's at least uh, nine uh, or 12 pegs long and then make a, uh, a slip knot and attach it to one of the pegs. 
now you're ready for strap three which is exactly like the last two so i'm just gonna let you watch as i do pegs 17 through 24. Once you're finished with strap three, you're then ready to remove the stitches to braid the straps. Sounds difficult, no worries, I'm gonna walk you through it. So you're going to need some kind of stitch holder. You just have to make sure that they can hold eight stitches. So these are the conventional stitch holders. I actually use these large safety pins and they worked out perfectly. They're cheap. And they're perfect so get whatever uh, stitch holder worked for you and we're going to start off by taking the one we're going to put last first you're going to want to do that in that order now you can take the tip from the safety pin to remove the stitches that's one method you can use personally i tend to prefer to um, use my hook and so I take the stitch off the peg using the hook and I put it on the uh, safety pin or whatever stitch holder you're using. The last one you want to put on is your um, slip knot and then secure your stitches, right? And notice how this uh, part of the fabric is on the outside and this is the inside. That's exactly how you want to put them back on. You want your fabric to look this way when you remount the stitches because after you braid, you need to put them back on. All right, so let me show you one more time how I'm taking it off. The first one, I, um, the last one I put on is the first one I'm going to take off. So taking that in mind, you do see how um, I'm using the stitch marker that I put on my loom I put one every eight stitches so I know uh, how I'm um, casting on right and then I put the slip knot last and then I close the stitch marker and you're going to do that one more time you know that when I said stitch marker I actually meant stitch holder right <laughs> sorry about that okay so again you're taking off um, your stitches putting them on whatever tool you wanted to use as a stitch holder and making sure that the last stitch you put on uh, on the holder is your slip knot. Now your stitches are off the loom and they are secured and you can see that you have on one end those that are loose and on the other end you have uh, they're connected by those five rows that you knit. So pull on the drawstring from the cast on because what you want to do now is to tighten and neat up that first row and some of them might give you a hard time so just pull on them a little to kind of soften them up so that you can complete you can keep pulling you don't want to completely close it you just want to tighten them up and then you need to stretch your stitches and you stretch them you can see how I'm stretching them and then pulling a little bit more again you're not trying to close this you just want to tighten the first row and stretch the stitches so they look neat um, and nicely the way that they should and once you have that looking the way you want it to look you're ready to braid and to braid you have three straps right so you have a middle and two sides and what you want to do is just bring the sides into the middle one at a time and you're going to get a new middle right so you, you can take the uh, right side and bring it to the middle and now that right strap is the middle then bring the left over over that one that was the uh, right strap and now that's the middle and that's all you have to do in order to braid you bring the sides into the middle when you get a new middle you bring in the other side braid okay 
that's your basic braid you need to keep this tight and you'll see later on why so every now and then just you know pull on it to make sure that it's it your braid is tight and you want to make sure that it's in the fabric is in the correct direction because on this side see it's open so you want to make sure that you keep it as you braid you keep the bottom under the bottom of the fabric that's open under and the ones that look closed because you see that they look like tubes right you knit it flat but now they curved in and they look like tubes so you want to make sure that you keep it looking nicely and here's what it'll look when you're done you'll have one edge end that's closed up and then the other end that's open and so now we need to remount those stitches but first I'm going to use these locking stitch markers to keep my braids together. I want to make sure that it doesn't come apart. This is optional. You don't need to do this, but I found that it works better if I do. All right. And now we're ready to remount and um, we want to make sure that the fabric is in the right direction. Remember I, I was saying that. Um, and now we're going to, uh, like I said before, take off the um, slip knot first. And then I'm going to start here on peg 24. And I'm going to drop the stitch. I'm going to remount it onto the peg. So you see that I started with peg 24 and now I'm going down, right? So 24, 23, 22. And I'm going to continue to just, with my hand, I find this uh, super easy to just use my fingers to put the stitch back on the peg. And you need to do this one at a time. Um, don't overthink it and don't stress, right? You have the right amount of stitches. And then all you're going to want to make sure is that you don't drop a stitch um, because you don't want this to unravel. It was a lot of work, right? If necessary, you could do like I'm doing here. Uh, you can use your hook. I just find it easier to use my fingers to put them back on. And um, if necessary, you know, slow down and, and um, just keep an eye on your stitches because I tell you if you lose one uh, and it unravels you're going to be really upset all right and here remember that was the first one I took off and it's the last one I put on and now there you go see you leave the um, slip knot out there and I'll show you uh, why so here I dropped one you see that I'm going back and picking it up and I lucked out that it didn't unravel and now there it is. My strap is mounted and you see that the um, slip knot is off and now I tighten my stitches. Here we go. Tighten them, tighten them and then take that slip knot, that last one and you pull it and now you need to secure it onto one of the pegs. Now we're gonna go to the next one and put it on. Now. Once you start putting, you're going to see that it's not that big of a deal which strap you start with. You can start with any strap, but you do want to start on peg 24. And then you're going to, again, um, take the slip knot off first and just leave it hanging. And then you're going to then start putting uh, your loops back on. And remember, we're going... Uh, from 24 we're going to keep adding uh loops until we get back to peg one and i'm sorry i kind of went off camera right here it's just the same thing it's just me um putting the uh, loops back on the peg so nothing fabulous is happening it's the same thing that i'm showing you this is uh, strap number two and then after I finish this one, I have one more strap. Again, slow down if you have to, to get this on. All right, here we go on strap three. Now all three straps are on and I'm tightening the loops on pegs 17 through 24 because I'm taking this long tail right here from strap three and I'm going to use it 
to you wrap knit pegs one through eight. Now they're connected. They're no longer separate. There's no longer um, a loose. You see it right there. I've basically connected um, that side of the loom to the other, right? And I'm using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch to knit those eight pegs. And now here is um, the last ones that I'm going to do right here. And this is why you tighten these these loops. Now I made a boo-boo right there. I don't know. I was distracted or something. And uh, I dropped the stitch. So I need to put it back on. And I'd like to show you my um, mistakes because I think that's helpful for you to see where I go wrong in case you go wrong. All right. So here's my peg eight. And now I have the drawstring that um, long tail from strap three that I'm connecting. I'm going to make a knot with the long tail from strap one. You see that? I hope that's not confusing. I'm now going to um, tighten those pegs from peg nine through 16. So it's the next eight pegs. I'm going to tighten the stitches because I need them to be ready. And so I tighten them and I pulled on the long tail. You see that that's the next strap, right? And now I'm going back and I'm going to take the long tail from strap one. And you can tell that it's the one that's left because it's longer. See, that one is shorter. So I'm going to take the longer one and I'm going to use it to knit pegs nine through 16. I'm doing this in order to connect these three straps so that it. I'm going to, after I do this, I'm going to be knitting in the round. I'm not knitting back and forth anymore. I need them to be connected and that's what I'm going to do here. So now once I knit um, those next eight pegs, you see that I have that long tail, right? From strap to right here, it's longer. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make a knot. In fact, I'm gonna make two knots because I just feel better if I do that. And you see, I don't, I don't have a lot of leftover tail because I kind of made mine a little too small. That's why I was telling you to maybe use, uh, make it longer than I did mine. And then now we're going to go ahead and do the last strap. I've already tightened these loops, so I'm not too concerned. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, knit those. So this is pegs 17 through 24. And now I'm done connecting the three straps. They're now together. And uh, you can see there's no opening. And so now I can go ahead and start knitting what I'm going to call base two, right? This is going to be rows 141 through 145, just like base one, where you're going to you wrap knit in the round 24 pegs. So first you got to add the working yarn back in. And so I'm going to make a knot with my working yarn and the leftover um, yarn from the last strap. And I'm going to, again, make two knots to just make it secure. And your best bet would have been, like I said before, to have a longer tail, but um, I tend to do this a lot. All right, so now you're gonna start rows 141 through 145 and you're just going to knit in the round five rows using the u wrap version of the knit stitch 
Once you finish your five rows, you're ready for the drawstring cast off, which is also known as the gathered method. So take your working yarn and you're going to wrap it around your loom at least one full circle. And to give yourself just a little wiggle room, you can go past that about two or three pegs and then with your scissors cut the working yarn and now you're going to need your hook which you're going to place over uh, the first loop on the first peg and scoop up the working yarn and you need to feed it through so you need to do this on all 24 of your pegs from the top using your hook you're going to scoop up now you can also use a needle for this i just find it easier to just do it with my hook so make sure that you get all 24 of your pegs and once you've done that with that same hook you can just take the loops off the peg and again you could do this with your hand or a needle so once you've taken off all the loops now your fabric is free and just like you did with base one you're going to stretch your stitches and pull on the drawstring to neaten up that first um well in this case the last row that you did you want to um, neaten up those stitches stretch out the fabric and then you're going to uh, bring them together so the two sides are identical it doesn't matter which one you choose you're going to put one inside the other like this you see just push it in there and then you're going to uh, sew right here uh, so just continue to push the fabric in uh, until you don't see any of the uh, knitted base of the one that you put in there like I said they're identical uh, and then you're gonna make sure that you get the drawstring from the one that's on the outside you're going to um, then need to kind of even out these braids you see how one side uh, was more open than the other so you're going to stretch your uh, braid until they are evenly distributed because this side which was remounted is always a little looser i mean it's not a major deal but you do want it to look even all around so you see that now they're evenly distributed if necessary you can go back a second time and just you're basically pulling on them so that the uh, the side that was a little looser is a little tighter and then get a needle and thread it with like I said the drawstring from the one that's on the top and you're basically going to sew that top one onto the one that's inside to secure it because you don't want these to pull apart you want it to stay in a nice neat circle and don't worry that this part looks different because this is where you will place your decoration and so it's not going to show so there's no need to um, be concerned that that looks a little different and then like I said you can get your scissors and, and cut any excess um, strands of yarn that are just like hanging out there because you want this to look neat I mean like I said I wouldn't panic because you are going to cover them but in case you don't want to put anything say you just want the reef by itself and then just tie the two uh, drawstrings so that they're neat um, and you could just feed it through if you want to and like I said you don't have to put a, a any kind of decoration you can leave it like that it looks fine I am going to be adding to uh, to my reef some uh, button flowers and leaves and I'll put a link in the description for those and you can attach these by sewing them on or you can use a low temperature glue gun and then just add them. Now I told you about that ring and I use this because when I go to put it on a surface it just holds up and stays better that way and I use pins, push pins because if I want to replace them for another season, it's not glued and attached to the ring. I can easily replace my reef. As you can see in the picture, you can't see the ring, so no worries. I did make a smaller version, and this one's actually in the written pattern. I like this one a lot. I've added a lot of stuff, including an eye cord and more of those buttons and fringes. And uh, I will uh, put this uh, in link, link in the description for the buttons and the eye cord. And I even uh, considered adding a, a macrame leaf 
and I might even do a video um, next time to show you guys how to make these because I thought it would look cool as well right here I'm not sure okay well I hope you like the pattern and you will come back and loom with me again